Senator, welcome back to the table. Glad to be here. Let me begin this way. Uh, some remarks that you made uh, on the floor of the Senate uh, in December. Uh, they happen to be related to an education bill, which we'll talk mm -hmm. about, but um, I thought they would be appropriate to uh, begin this way. You said uh, this has been one of the most productive Senate years in a long time, but perhaps the American people are wondering why. Perhaps they're wondering why the Senate is suddenly back to work this year. Perhaps they're wondering why some issues are suddenly passing now and when they weren't passing previously. So as one of those wondering what happened <clears throat> and how you got back to work, that was your intention and you worked your plan? Well, let's first review where we were. Uh, the day after my own reelection, I had a press conference over at the University of Louisville at the McConnell Center and I said, we're not gonna have any more government shutdowns and we're not gonna have any more threatening to default on the national debt. And what we're going to be is a responsible, right of center governing majority. What does that mean? Well, first, we had to end the dysfunction. <clears throat> Let me give you two examples of dysfunction. In all of 2014, the last year of the previous majority, there were only 15 roll call votes on amendments in the whole year. We just wrapped up the first year of the next Congress under the new majority. We had about 200. Four of the last five years under the previous majority, no budget was passed, even though that's required by law. We did that. So I think the first thing you can say is dysfunction is over. Now, secondly, that's not nearly enough. What did you do with the new majority? We do have divided government. We do know the president is not Bill Clinton. He's not a centrist. He's not looking to come to the middle. <clears throat> so what I tried to do, knowing full well that we were not likely to do great big deals like entitlement reform or comprehensive tax reform with this very liberal president, what things could we do? Because we've had divided government so often. <clears throat> I think the American people are saying when they elect divided government, it's not that we don't want you to do anything. We know you, know you have differences. Why don't you look for the things you can agree on that are worth doing and try to do them? Keystone Pipeline, even though the president ultimately didn't sign it, <clears throat> enjoyed broad bipartisan support. The Iran Nuclear Review Act, broad bipartisan support. Trade Promotion Authority was a very interesting issue. There I was aligned with Barack Obama against Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi. And Trade Promotion Authority is the process by which a president can submit a trade agreement and get a vote on it. And by the way, it covers six years, so it not only provides that opportunity for this president, but for the next one. We did a complete rewrite of No Child Left Behind. <clears throat> the K through 12 federal education bill had been so controversial across the country. Actually, believe it or not, taking power out of Washington and sending it back to the states. You would think it'd be easy to pass a highway bill since everybody likes highways, in fact, we had done so many short-term extensions over the years, you'd have to go back to the 90s to find the time, last time we did a highway bill as long as five years, which we did this year, with an odd set of players, Barbara Boxer and the guy you're looking at. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have much in common <laughs> politically, but we both thought this was important, and we put together a, a significant bipartisan accomplishment. Cybersecurity, we passed that. That had been stuck for many Congresses. And an important environmental bill called <clears throat> Toxic Cleanup. So if you look back, Bill, over the first year, dysfunction is clearly over by any objective standard. There was this, uh, all of these bills, except the Keystone Pipeline, actually got a presidential signature. And so <clears throat> my view was, just because you have differences is no excuse not to do the things you can agree on. So going into 2016, how do I look at it? Some people will say well, it was an election year, you can't do much. Well, we've had an election every two years right on schedule mm -hmm. since 1788. Mm -hmm. You could always say, well, we can't do anything because there's an election next year, or we can't do anything because there's an election this year. I don't accept the premise that it has to be an unproductive year. So what would be a significant accomplishment for 2016? Let me tell you. We haven't passed all 12 of the bills <clears throat> that fund the government, the appropriation bills, separately, since 1994. 1994. I think if the majority leader 
the guy you're looking at, <clears throat> who makes the scheduling decisions, schedules the bills, and makes it a priority, we could at least get the functioning of the government in an orderly fashion back up and running so we don't have to do one of these great big omnibus bills at the end of the year, which we had to do this year because our Democratic friends wouldn't give us the 60 votes we needed to start on the bills. In other words, they refused to pass them. <clears throat> so what I'd like people to say at the end of this Congress, two years, two sessions, is that Congress is back to work, and while we have our differences, and we pursued some of them, we put Obamacare repeal on his desk, mm -hmm. which he'll veto. <clears throat> we did look for the things that we could agree on that made a difference for the country, and we did them.